Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of What's in the Box Track. Thank y'all for tuning in. I apologize. I haven't checked in with y'all since the Lakers lost to the Grizzlies. Uh, game 62, about four games ago. Been really busy for your boy Trek life over here, but I'm trying to catch up and keep up. I enjoy doing these, and I enjoy the fact that you guys are enjoying them yourselves. So thank you for watching them. Look, what we do here on What's in the Box Track, if this is your first time tuning in, is I talk about the Lakers from a stats perspective, from a can they do it perspective, usually with some fan optimism because I am a fan of the Lakers, and as a fan, you can choose optimism if you prefer, which is probably the normal thing a fan does. You know, some of you guys are really odd. However, I don't talk about the drama. I don't particularly care about who's on the team, who's off the team. That's for the front office. That's not for me. And this season, let's just be honest, maybe the last season, it's based on Anthony Davis's health. So what we're seeing the Lakers do right now, we actually saw the Lakers do back in November. Anthony Davis was healthy. He was playing his best. Boom. Lakers are winning, right? Anthony Davis is off the court. All sorts of problems start to happen. We've seen this the last couple of years. So I don't know if I particularly am still sold or have bought that one team is better before or after the trade. I think it's more of a feeling thing. So miss me with it. Don't bother me with it. I ain't even trying to hear it. Be done with it. Now, Lakers, the Lakers beat Memphis, beat the, beat the Memphis Grizzlies last night. Excuse me for my little breakdown there. Um, and a pretty good game, man. A, a good game for the Lakers. Definitely a great game for Anthony Davis. Probably more a great game for AD than it was for the Lakers. We'll get into that for a sec in a second. They also beat the Memphis Grizzlies, of course, without Ja Morant. And we'll get into why that's important outside of the obvious. Uh, because there is a couple of important notes going forward for the Lakers defensively as they have changed to a better team with AD on the floor. But also because they're longer. They're longer. They're not small at two with Patrick Beverly there. Not that I hate Patrick Beverly or anybody like that. I just need to clarify that. But really, the Lakers are a longer defensive team, which is, you know, a pretty big factor in the NBA. Now, I usually give my sort of story of the game at the end. I give you guys the stats and I, I break down the story of the game. But I'm going to start with my story of the game this time. And that is these are two teams that are pretty similar. Now, mind you, the Memphis Grizzlies are the better team at least throughout this season, with health and everything, you know, uh, as a factor. Memphis has been the better team the last two seasons, actually. But both teams are not great three-point shooting teams. That has not been fixed by the trade. Everybody thought it was going to be fixed. I was skeptical. Anyway, but we haven't had D-Low. I get it. But either way, it hasn't been fixed yet. Uh, both teams are great rebounding teams. Both teams rely on points in the paint. Now, when we get to this rebounding factor... The Memphis Grizzlies are the number two team in rebounds, all-around rebounds, both offensive and defensive. The Lakers are number, they, they waffle between number four and five. But flip that to offensive rebounds, and the Memphis Grizzlies are the number four team in the league in offensive rebounds. The Lakers are number 19. How does that disparity work out? Well, it's about four offensive rebounds a game, which is a pretty significant amount when it comes to those type of rebounds, right? How did that break down this game? Well, we're going to have to figure that out, right? That's what, that's what we're here to discuss. So check it out. The Lakers win last night, 103 to 112. Uh, the attempts were about even. You know, I'm, I like to, if you've been watching this show since its inception, I like to out-attempt the other team. The more shots you get at it, the better. 93 to 90. Memphis had three more opportunities. That comes down to a couple of turnovers. But... We'll, uh, we'll get into that. Neither team shot super great. The Lakers around 46%. The Grizz around 39%. The difference here is that the Grizzlies kept shooting threes in spite of the fact that they weren't successful at it. Uh, a lot of teams do that when they fall behind, but the, the Grizz were, had some moments where they were up, and all they had to do was continue to attack the basket. They ended up shooting about 24% from three. Now, the Lakers did not shoot any better, but they shot about almost 10 less threes. The Lakers have done this all season. In spite of not being a great three-point shooting team, they don't, you know, make it worse by shooting too many. They still shoot near the least three-pointers in the league. And they shot, last night, they shot 28 at 25%. Not super great. Three-pointers are a bit of an issue for me personally. This is the only place I become an old head because I feel like when you have a lead, <clears throat> you should be at the basket. That's where you should be. You should be forcing the team to foul. Speaking of fouls, last time the Lakers lost, Darvin Ham made a point to say that the Lakers were being aggressively defended, which is Memphis is a great defensive team, but they were not forcing the action, which would force fouls. In this game, 
Both teams shot 29 free throws. The Lakers shot 79%. The Grizz shot 76%. Now, this is a good point here because you want to attack the basket against an aggressive defensive team. They're going to reach. They're going to push. They're going to foul. And that's exactly what happened this time around. Rebounds. The Lakers out-rebounded the Grizzlies. 57 to 45. And offensively, they out-rebounded them by one, seven to six, which is a good thing. They kept the Grizzlies off the offensive boards. The weird thing is that the offensive boards led to um, nine, only nine second chance points for the Lakers and 13 second chance points for the Grizz. This is actually solid defense, poor shot selection, but poor shot selection is actually part of good defense. If you watch the Lakers against Minnesota when they lost to Minnesota, you'll note that Minnesota forced them into some pretty bad shots. And the Lakers did a lot of the same thing when Anthony Davis was on the floor applying pressure. Also, when the Lakers go into this scoring low, which is my biggest problem with the Lakers right now, if you're watching the game, plus 20 with AD on the floor, minus 15 with AD off. A lot of you guys don't like plus minus, but that's a pretty legitimate plus minus when it comes down to it. But defensively, they held their own. They wouldn't, the, the, the Grizz couldn't, Take off. A lot of that has to do with not having Ja, who puts a lot of those points up in the paint, puts a lot of pressure on your guards. Get into that in a moment. I still got in the back of my mind. But, you know, plus four in second chance points is fair. Plus, plus four to plus six, we can live with that. It's when you start getting into plus eight, plus 10, plus 15, that's when giving up those second chance points becomes an issue. The Lakers had 27 assists on 41 made baskets. Yes. Like that a lot. Keep that up, Lakers. 15 turnovers to the Grizzlies, seven. This is a recurring issue, but is it that big of an issue? If you've been watching the show, I've told you that once you, and this, this season at least, once you start getting down to that 20th, 21st spot, that's when the turnovers start to get a little shaky. Right now, the Lakers are 16th in the league. Now, just to note, that is point two to three turn point two to point three turnovers behind ninth place and about maybe point eight <laughs> turnovers behind seventh place look turnovers are a not a deep disparity and it's a law of averages i understand that some teams are doing better by average uh, but the reality is you're facing teams that force a lot of turnovers some nights and teams that can't force a lot of turnovers or other nights, different defenses, different setups. AD has been the culprit this time, so it hasn't been LeBron, the normal one, or Russell Westbrook because he's not on the team. But this same thing has continued to happen because the pressure is on the ball handler and AD making himself a ball handler by attacking on the rebound now has decisions to make with the ball. You don't, even though AD is good at this, you know, Jokic is the best I've ever seen and probably anyone's ever seen at it. Next, if you've ever watched Kareem, but he was passing out of double teams, etc. AD is a pretty good push center, but I still don't want him making a lot of decisions on the break. And that's what you're seeing. He's going to have to put the ball on the rim or give the ball up. And that'll change that turnover disparity. In spite of the turnover disparity, though, the Lakers still actually made 15 points off of turnovers, and the Grizz, 14. Again, poor shot selection by the Grizz. 20 points, fast break points for the Lakers, 13 for the Grizz, and 52 points in the paint to 50. Uh, Lakers outplay the Grizz in the paint. Again, no job Morant, that makes it different, but no LeBron also makes it different. So let's just keep that in mind as well. The big thing I've been mentioning about not having Ja is that what the Lakers did uh, gain in size, they lost in size, right? So Playing against these smaller guards is going to, it looks like it's going to be an issue for the Lakers. So your Dames, your SGAs, your Jaws, those players are going to give the Lakers, as they give the rest of the league, fits. And it's something the Lakers are going to have to be careful of when they're going on these scoring lulls where there's like five minutes where they can't, can't make a basket. If you saw it last night, you saw that the bench did a good job defensively but did not score to give the Lakers some separation, some cushion. You also saw it against the Warriors. You saw it against Minnesota. You saw it when they played against Memphis. So this is a, an issue that the Lakers are going to have to fix. Now, maybe, possibly, and hopefully, D'Angelo Russell can fix this issue, but they also have to stop going, your turn, your turn, your turn, when AD's off the floor, right? You're putting Malik Beasley, who hasn't shot very well, in some pretty awkward three-point positions. I know these are ones that he can make. I know he's a volume three-point shooter, but mm, I'm not a fan of that. I'm just not a fan of how, how that's being played. Um, with all that being said, man, the Lakers have... 
the next five games. So the Lakers are minus two. We've talked about this. The Lakers get to 500. They're clearly going to be in the playoffs. So if you look this season, they'll are at least to play in, at least to play in. But the Lakers have a chance over the next five games to go plus three. This is who they play. They play the Raptors. Not an easy game, I know. The Knicks, not an easy game. But you're at home for both of those games. So this, you got a shot, right? And you play the Rockets. You better beat the Rockets. You better beat the Rockets, right? And then you got to play New Orleans. And you actually better beat New Orleans. You better beat New Orleans because if you don't, then they own the tiebreaker. And that makes it that much more difficult if you happen to tie them for 10th place or 9th place. Then you're going to fall behind them. The only teams that own the tiebreaker for the Lakers are the Clippers and the Timberwolves. Matter of fact, the Nuggets don't even own the tiebreaker for the Lakers, but they're going to have a better record, so that's how that works out. The Lakers, if they can win the next five games, they would go plus three, or at least, you know, go plus two. If they can win four, go four and one. No, they go plus one. But anyway, they have a chance to actually make up some ground here, some ground that <laughs> it's almost impossible to make up this type of ground. And you've seen the Lakers slowly but surely make this up whenever AD is healthy. So if the Lakers can make up this ground over the next five games, then they have Dallas, another crucial game. And then they have Minnesota, which is not as crucial from a standings standpoint since Minnesota only owns, already owns a tiebreaker. But it is a crucial game from a standing standpoint as far as every, every team bunched up in this spot. I have the Lakers at one game over 500 by the end of the season and in the play-in. I want to be so wrong about this that you guys are basically in my comment section telling me that I'm horrible and trash. I will take every trash comment if I am wrong about this. If the Lakers are in sixth or fifth place, I would be like, yeah, you're right. I'm absolutely wrong, and I shouldn't analyze anything anymore. So let's hope that I'm wrong so y'all can throw some shade at me. This has been What's in the Box Trek. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Please make sure you tune in. Next time, the Lakers' next game is against the Toronto Raptors on Friday night. Let's go. Peace.